how did you think? I'm not in the garden. Junior Patrol. I hear she has a great event. Am I in the garden junior school? The debate patrol is here. It's just coming from Mozambique for the international tour, which they did very well. Many grace to welcome you. Allow us to thank the principal from Amai Mugabe Junior School, Apostle Murizo, for coming and gracing this noble occasion. My mother. Also, allow me to thank from Mother Patrick Convent Primary School, Mem Kagurabata. Also, yes, 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 yes. I've said a lot of good things about this school. The hospitality, the effort that was made uh, by every person that managed to make this event a success. The person that I'm going to talk about or introduce at this moment is the person who gave the green light to whoever was responsible for making this tournament a success coming from this very noble institution. <clears throat> when I first saw him the day I came here, it's only when I was told that he is the man. He's so humble that I actually got shocked that I was talking to the men. When we had already had a conversation, life happened very badly, giving advice, asking questions. You could just assume he's one of the patrons. Or maybe someone is just caring enough to want to know how things are going. So if one of the, one of the organizers I had an issue, so I wanted to speak to the men, then he said, Ma'am, why, why are you troubling yourself? Because you already spoke to this man. So you'll be able to go and speak to him again. And say, oh really? Let me, let me know who the man is. So allow me at this point in time, appreciate the most humble man that I've ever seen. Regardless of him being the principal of this noble institution. Can we all rise? for the principal. Principal Mr. Mapara, Northwest. I'm very humbled. The first time I spoke to you, I never knew you were the principal. Very engaging. You know, it was a beautiful conversation. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal. As teachers, classroom practitioners, we feel very much honored, not only as debaters, but as people that are solely responsible for taking care of our little ones, classroom or outside classroom, for making sure we impart the knowledge that they are able to use today, now and forever. We understand that Education 5.0 is one of the things that we appreciate as far as educational transformation is concerned. So as teachers, as people who find it okay to make sure our little ones get the opportunity to exercise critical thinking, we are very much honored to have people within our ministry who support this global cause, who wants to be part of this goodness. And their presence makes us also know that whatever we are doing is the right thing to do. At this moment, allow me to make you rise again. For the Deputy Director of the Ministry of Education, Dr. Muso. We are very humble.
that was arrived here at the lecture by the panel as the Ministry of um, Education. Number <laughs> So, <laughs> he's on top of his game. Now the training show, he has a good I got to be a parent, but I have a I don't I don't know if I don't it's going to be an interesting, an interesting night because it's a chance to have my debates. I'm going to be here to have my speech with you. You will have to go to the debate. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to be part of uh, this uh, prestigious event where children have to give us their views on issues of their life through debate and uh, public speaking. High school uh, debate uh, challenge has brought this very interesting program, which is very good as it is a child-centered. Um, issues of child abuse. Any child marriages, child abuse, who was one of the children who was born in a tomb, a Christ of men, a person who was born in a tomb, and a child who was born in a tomb, and a child who was born in a tomb, and a child who was born in a tomb, and a child for the next three or four days, we are going to go to the next three or four days. We are going to go to the next three or four days. We are going to go to the next the future is bright.
the views that are coming from your children. When you raise something that affects them, if they have to respond, don't beat them up. Interrogate them on why they have to arrive at that conclusion. After you hear them speaking tonight, I would like you to reconsider the way you dismiss your children whenever they raise an issue on issues that affect their life. It's very important that we do that. Most of them simply dismiss them as children. But after you hear them speaking tonight, I would challenge every parent to reconsider the way they are handled the use of their children. Right. I would like to give this time to Miss to Miss a Apostle A Mulito for the speech of Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor or protocol of that. Good evening everyone. As much as I lead a Mangabe Junior School, definitely and honestly, things are happening. Let me just say in brief, it is God who is actually picking and identifying all our learners who we have time. I'll, make, I'll not take the orders this evening, but let, it, let us hear it straight and straight from the horse's mouth. Miss G. Tezi, she was with our children at my Gabe Junior School in Mozambique, where everything, all that beauty transpired over to her. Beautiful evening to all of you. It is my pleasure to be here. Actually, I was feeling very tired when I was asked to come here because I came from Beira today. But I thank God that I'm here to give the feedback and to thank our organizers for such a wonderful thing that I've started. This is a beautiful thing, Mr. Mara. Well done. Um, our journey to Beira, we have, uh, I've nicknamed it, I've named it. The dream trip to Bayer because we're really looking forward to the trip. Um, the competitions were quite electric. It was, we had a great time in Mozambique. Of course, the trip to Mozambique it was really hectic for some of our learners because it was the first time to travel long distances by, by bus. But we thank God that we made it. And debate competitions are really an excellent platform for students to showcase their critical thinking, public speaking, and analytical skills, not only for the learners, but for us as well. I used to be a very quiet person, but because of the debate being done in Arunas, because I had to defend myself, you know, because of this debate thing, you know, they were accusing us of something that we did not agree to. And then I had the audacity to stand before them and argue. Yes, now we are in narrow because of debate. So well done debaters, you are training us as well. Uh, debate actually helps to boost confidence and provide us, provide learners with an opportunity to express their opinions, like what I've witnessed in the previous debate competitions, and also the journey to the subject competition. It commenced, I think it was in Northwest in March, and we are excited as AMJS to be part of this amazing journey. Fast forward, the teams that represented Zimbabwe were uh, Mother Patrick and Amain Gabe Junior School. So on August 1, we were at Beira International School, and the hospitality from the Mozambique is just amazing. Unfortunately, you guys are not going to Mozambique. Those people are beautiful. They are so they are so welcoming in the hospitality was out of this world. The day, the first day, the day was packed with the teams betting for the trophy. There were about more than 12 debate teams, and among the Virginia School had two debate teams. There was Team Florida and Team California. They all Team California, which was Team B, won all the four rounds in the preliminaries, but was eliminated on point aggregate. 
and the team A team Florida competed against him against all the teams until the finals. After a bit of a selection process, the top two teams, which was Tokyo, uh, Mother Patrick and Florida, and mind the Virginia School, advanced to the final round of the competition at the exquisite Senna Hotel in Beira. The final round was a much anticipated event, and the topic of the debate was it is morally wrong for poor people to give birth. A man the Virginia school took the non-affirmative side. The finalists had to present their arguments in front of a larger audience, including students, teachers, parents, and the atmosphere was electric. The participants had so much support from the audience. Both teams remained composed and delivered their arguments with confidence. The final round was a closely contested affair, but in the end, very the team consisting of Tanaka Sunwa, Max Obetera, Tashika Mokore from Amanda Virginia Schools emerged as the winners. The judges were impressed with their well-structured arguments, supported by relevant evidence, and delivered with conviction. The runners up from Mother Patrick School also put up an excellent performance and recommended by the judges. From the public speaking category, we had a total of 20 participants from various schools. Among the Virginia School was represented by four individual participants, Precious Tatenda, Amadis, and Pell. Precious Jaka made it to the finals, where she clinched the first position to become the first public speaker. In the relay public speaking competition, we had about 10 teams, and Amanda Virginia School was represented by two teams. Only Team A made it to the finals, and two other teams from Mother Patrick, who won first and second, and Amanda was third. Uh, the prizes won the debate. Team teams decided a trophy and a certificate. Public speaking, Precious Jaffa won the first position and best public speaker. She walked away with a shield and 100, 100 US dollars. And then we have the relay public speaking uh, that came there and walked away with those certificates. And then overall the competition was a resounding success. And all the participants were praised for their hard work, dedication, commitment and the art of debating. Now we wait in anticipation as we proceed to participate in the Pan-African Debate Challenge in Lagos, Nigeria in December. In conclusion, I would like to congratulate Mr. Mara and his team for putting up so much effort into this project. To all the patrons, I salute you. This would not have been possible and this, what we are seeing today, is not possible without the help of the, of the patrons. And also to our administrators, we salute you for giving us the opportunity to take part in such amazing projects. I say a lot of continue. Surely, with Jesus Christ ahead of us, the sky is the limit. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, without wasting my time, can I humbly call upon Mayor Kapura Banda for Mother Patrick Content to give us a short speech. to our champions, our future champions. May I say all protocols observed. It is indeed a great honor to be amongst you uh, at this prestigious event where we are giving an opportunity to our young generation to showcase their talents, their skills, how much knowledge they have and how much competences they have acquired. 
I would like to congratulate the team that has taken this initiative um, to take up these um, heart-breaking events that are happening in our society. Sometimes it is about the approach that we use in giving people information. And I would like to give a round of applause to this team for coming up with such a creative program to impart the knowledge and skills that are impact, being imparted to our future generations. Let us give them a round of applause. Black and proud. There I was in an international school full of white people, full of Chinese, full of all Europeans. And there I was with my black skin. I was proud. There they were looking at me. They were like, are you a monkey? Where are you from? They looked at me like this. And I was like, I am a black person and I am strong and I am proud. I am proud of my skin, I am proud of my roots. I told them that even though you are light, I am intellect I'm an intellectual and apart from that, I am proud with the way I am. They went on and said, what do you having for your lunch? Are you having salsa? They looked at me like this and I said, the salsa was made by my mom with love and with all the appreciation and she said, my child, take this and make me proud. That's what I did at an international school. When they looked at me and said, will you be able to live here full of us white people? I said, no, I'll be able to live here because I am black and I am proud. Just because I am black, don't look down upon me. Just because you think I'm a monkey, don't look up, down upon me. I am strong and I am proud of who I am. I am more than what you think. If you judge me by my color, do not be forsaken. I am bigger and I am stronger than a giant. I looked at them like this. I am making my mother proud. This blackness, I am proud of it. This blackness that you are judging, I am proud of it. If you think I'm a monkey, then believe what you are. Because stop, I am black and I am proud. Thank you. In no particular order, the team that I'm ready to try and Black and proud. We all heard the motion, black and proud. In this room, in this auditorium, I see black people, people of my own race. But people of my own race have been undermined by the whites. But looking at people of my own race, we managed to build the great Zimbabwe without any formal architecture. The whites think of themselves above us, they take us as a book and they judge us by our cover. Yet the content inside is the one that matters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling upon you and I, the black race. Let us be black and be proud of ourselves. I weep for those 
We're bleaching their skin color, their skin tones, because they're not proud of being black. What a shame on you. Shame on you. Well, my colleagues and I will be black and proud of ourselves. We we'll spread our wings like an eagle, soaring high above the storm with an eagle's eye view. When they undermine us, we undermine them. When they think we're below, we're actually above. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not the losers. We're actually the winners. So I move forward with the notion in motion, black and proud. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been undermined quite a lot. But don't be shaking. We stand firm and unshakable, being black and being proud. I repeat, black and proud. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Black and proud. Black and proud. Yes. One day I walk into an interview. Yes. It's full of white people. I walk. I've got, I've got my head held high. I'm confident. I'm black and proud. I sit down. The interviewer starts asking crazy questions. He starts, the English words, I need the dictionary. I don't have it at hand. They're talking English. I keep moving, I keep moving, I keep striding. Then at the end of the day, I've got all the qualifications in the world, but I don't make it. But at the end of the day, I'm still black and proud. I'm undermined each and every day. They look at me and they look down upon me. Maybe it's because I'm short. Each and every day, they look at me and they see, he's black. He's so, so black. Why? But I'm still proud. Let's get our heads held high. We don't care who says what and who says it when. But we are black and we are proud. Who cares that we went through slavery, went through colonization? Let's not always blame it on that. Let's be black and let's be proud. You know, we were born from the ashes of a cruel system. Some were born from apartheid. But today, we are the public speakers in front of you. We're black and proud. I'm telling you that we don't care. We really don't care whatever they say, whatever they do, whether they're white, green, yellow, or black. We are proud of ourselves. We are black and proud. Black and proud. I stand here today in front of you all ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you must be wondering, who is this girl? Well, you can see by my complexion that I am black. Not only am I black, but I am also proud. For I bear the African culture within me. I am a daughter of Nehanda and Kaguri, blossomed from the brilliant mind of Umzili Kazi Kamashabana, originating from the brilliant mind of our own president, Mr. E.D. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am sure you must be thinking, what kind of a girl is she? Well, I don't think I need to define myself to you, for I am proud of who I am. I do not fear anything. I do not fear anyone. I was born and raised for war. Like a Spartan, like a Spartan soldier, I will fight till the last breath. Because I learned to stand up for myself and to stand for what I believe. And not only will I end there, but I will take it further. I will let the whole world know that the Blake race is a race of beautiful and proud people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on talking, for I have a lot to enlighten each and every one of you here. But for tonight, let me rest here and leave you the joy of suspense. For I know that each and every one of you here is waiting for me to take the prize. I thank you. Moving forward, we are now announcing the break for the finalists of the HIPC National Tournament 2023 Relay Speeches. Thank you. After serious deliberation of the round that we had, we came up out of 12 schools that pitched their relatives, we were left with six. So, in no particular order, I repeat, in no particular order, the teams that broke up.
please, may your team representative come forward once I call you out. The team that broke are Brookside. Apparently, we see that Zimbabwe is a low income, he has a low income status, uh, and we have the SDG goals and the Vision 2030. And to attain this Vision 2030, we have realized that uh, intelligence is not enough. What we need is hard work, dedication, and innovation, so that by 2030, the nation's government will be able to provide enough medical facilities as well as quality education. Uh, from early childhood development to tertiary institution. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, intelligence in is not enough. All we know is that once we place hard work, innovation and determination, uh, the vision 2020 will surely be attained. And trust me, Zimbabwe will not be looked down upon. Instead of being looked up upon as the low middle income status, it will be uh, actually more looked up to by other nations. A wise man once said, united we stand and apart we fall. Let us look at the SD goals that we have. Let us look, for example, at the SD goal number two, which deals in pro which, de which wants to deal in production of more food, aiming for better food security. Right now, families are starving, settling for only one meal per day. But with this goal, with hard work and determination and unity, we we'll see that we shall prevail and yet we shall have a future where families shall not only settle for just one meal per day, but more than two meals per day. We also look at the SD goal number three, which deals with health, aiming for better equipment, better certified equipment and skilled doctors. We shall no longer have to travel to better the countries in order to get treatment, but we shall have the best doctors in our country. We shall have the certified equipment, not just having one cancer detecting machine in our country. Intelligence is not enough. Intelligence is not enough. Intelligence is not enough. I wonder. Intelligence is not enough. Ladies and gentlemen, a tool 
in the hands of the wrong man is wrongly applied, leading to damage. Intelligence in the hands of a fool results in hazardous conditions instead of it benefiting us. Intelligence is not enough. If you are intelligent, you need knowledge on how to apply it. You need resources for it to bring results. Intelligence alone is not enough. It needs a work plan. It needs ways and wisdom on how to apply it. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, a weapon in the hands of a fool may lead to suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, intelligence is not enough. It is like peanut butter without bread. We can never even eat peanut butter without bread. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be intelligent but still don't have the money to apply your intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, the price that intelligent people here, they feel like they are on top of the world. They feel like they are the king. Intelligence is not enough. Intelligence will never be enough. Intelligence will forever never be enough. They say knowledge is power when used right, but it is toxic when used wrong. Intelligence is not enough. A man with intelligence should be able to walk like an intelligent man, should be able to speak like an intelligent man in order to influence the next person. Intelligence is not enough. Ladies and gentlemen, intelligence requires character. Without character, you'll be attacked by pride, making democracy dictatorship. You only want to be heard, but instead of one intelligent voice, we need many resources. And with this, we thank you. Clarifying face scrub. Unlock the natural you with head care. Daily cleansing. Relaxing. With head care, extra gentle face wash. Unlock the natural you. that it is the will of the family. Yes, we understand it is the will of the family, 
invite we as making it compulsory before they send the contract of involvement. We are saying that before we take your child, you should send this thing, making it compulsory for us to make a DNA test. Therefore, before they sign the contract, they have the rule of doing that. That is why we're making it compulsory for other schools. Before they come into our school, before we enroll them, we are giving them a contract to sign that we are making this mandatory for them. Point. Speaker, can you please explain how your parent influences the goals or the achievements that you want to have in school? Panel, if I do not know who my father is and I also continue to fight with my mother, I am stressed at school because I am seeking for that father's love. I am not bored in my next father because I am seeking for that father's love because I am in a dark corner. I am looking for my father and my mother to grant me of that information. Therefore, that is not the whole dream of a student. The same way that they are advocating for the world. <laughs> as the proposition advocating for the well-being of the student because we believe that it is crucial for a family to give that information to their, to their children. That is where we are coming with the point of accountability. That is where we are coming with the point of fairness. How are we going to reach this fairness? The same way we say enough is enough when fathers or when male people fight other women. We are saying that these men that we are also saying that we are fighting for the women against, they should get fairness because women are manipulating men into paying school fees for a child that they do not bring to. So the same way we fight for women, we should also fight for the men on the other side. Point. That is why it brings fairness on both parties, which is why we are calling it the principle of utility because all parties are happy. The child is happy on the side because they know who their father is. The child is not seeking for love outside. The child is happy because they know who their mother is. The same way we fight for enough is enough for the women, we should also fight for enough is enough for the men because they shouldn't take their money out of their pocket to pay, to pay school fees for a child that is not theirs. Therefore, we are saying that the fairness point stands still. We are also bringing the denied. We are also bringing the point of accountability. How do we bring this point of accountability? The minute the father knows that they are responsible for that, they need to be responsible for their actions because they know that they brought a child into life. That is why they start paying school fees for the child. Therefore, they are being accountable for their actions. Hence, we are promoting people who are accountable for their actions, people who know the effects of their actions, people who know what is going to happen when what is happening, right? We also bring the point of maximum devotion by children in school. If I know such information and if my mother does not deprive me of such information, I will go to that school with a happy smile, reading the textbooks that they mentioned, doing everything I do, devoted to my schoolwork, because I have a happy family. I have that triangle, my mother, my father, and I. That means that everything is happy, therefore I'm devoted into my work, therefore making maximum points denied, therefore making sure that I achieve the goals, and therefore the school that they said that is setting the career path is also doing the same way that it's doing, because they are advocating for the world view of the child. We are also bringing the morality. Advocating for morality in a manner that we are continuing with the norm in Zimbabwe has lived with for long. Because you know that if you are given, if you have damaged somewhere else, you know that you have to be responsible for it. Therefore, we are continuing. Therefore, we are continuing to enrich our culture. We are continuing to appreciate the rules. Therefore, we are continuing to make sure that people do not lose that Africanism of that. Therefore, we are continuing with the rules that the Zimbabweans have been living with forever. Tonight. Like I mentioned, we are also bringing the panel, what we brought to the table. We brought principle of accountability, we brought principle of utility, we also showed the maximum devotion by the children in schools. We also brought the to panel, whereas they were talking about privacy all over again, showing you examples, and we have also reverted to the things that they already mentioned. We have built a strong case panel. We also brought you how our policy, we also showed you how our policy is going to continue working because we mentioned that we are going to start this policy at a tender age whereby before they involve, we make them sign that contract of enrollment. Therefore, we are advocating for the well-being of the child. Other than advocating for the well-being of the child, they are also advocating for the well-being of the child only. But we are advocating for the well-being of the child. We are advocating for the men that are also being fighting with the law that they didn't even come with. We are also advocating for those mothers that the children are fighting with in the house because they say, where is my father? We are also advocating for a happy and a serenity life in the world, which is what something that we are fighting for. So in this side of the house panel, you are having that serenade and that happy Zimbabwe. But on this side of the house, you have that board that is dilapidated because of privacy. Therefore, I have never been more proud to, to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Deputy Prime Minister. of respect and kindly ask me to not make noise while I'm doing my presentation. It would be very disruptive 
Also, in case you want to laugh or to make any remark or to tell them, please just do this. Do not snap. Do not snap. Do not make noise. Beginning in beginning in three, two, one. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to start by acknowledging that yes, we are saying that the child should know their parent, but here is where the major rebuttal is. We are saying that the mechanism which the government side is trying to propose is the wrong one. Let's move straight to the rebuttals. So they come here and they're talking about there will be a burden which will be placed on the wrong person if they are not the rightful parent. No, but ladies and gentlemen, we do accept that that burden is going to exist. But honestly, should it be done in a school setting, a public place in which a lot of people are going to know about that issue? That is what we are rebutting and that is why we are saying that this has to be done in a private place. Because imagine, you are now going to go to school and people are going to say, oh, that's that boy who doesn't know his father, who had the wrong father. That is going to affect that child, of which here we want to prioritize the stakeholder, the child and the well-being of that child, so that that child will go correctly, will grow up correctly. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to engage on more of the things that we are talking about. There were, so here are the clashes that we had in this debate. One, we are looking at resources in which they are saying that schools are actually capable of doing this. But no, but ladies and gentlemen, let me try to go and let us be realistic. How much does it cost to have a DNA test? It costs a lot. Now, look at the schools that are in Zimbabwe, particularly not in the capital cities. Some of them, the school fees is actually 20 US dollars. Next thing you want to provide a mechanism in which DNA testing is going to be done at the schools. We are opposing such a notion. So now, ladies and gentlemen, another um, class that we had in this debate was looking at the well-being of the child, saying that the well-being of the child needs to be preserved. Yes, it needs to be preserved, but not in an environment in which it is going to be public and it is going to ruin the image of that child. How are we characterizing how this public place is going to be an effect for the child? Now, imagine the analogy that was given by my first speaker. He said that, imagine a parent is going to grab a brick and is going to throw it at their partner and people are looking. That is going to affect that child, but that will be a publicity stunt that will forever stain and taint their picture, which is what we are trying to avoid. Now, normal ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to our case and why we deserve to be winning this debate. We talked about why there is no relationship or correlation between a school and the DNA test. Why? Because we outlined that the school has these functions. One, educating the child, and two, building up that child, nurturing up that child. That is the sole responsibility of the school. So if it's now about DNA testing and knowing about who your parent is, why should it be done at an institution like a school, even worse if the school is not even in the capacity to be doing such a thing? So we are basically saying that if there's going to be, now listen, listen carefully, this is our counter model, in which we are saying that we want it to be in a private place, like in a private home, and two important things. One, we don't want to force you, so you are not supposed to have this obligation and make it compulsory because you know that times in this country are hard and therefore the cost of this DNA course are not going to be realistic and feasible. It's very expensive. So one, you should be able to afford it. Two, it's not going to be compulsory. Three, it has to be in a private setting. Why are we saying this? Because we are looking at the following elements. One, we want you to have the safety of the child. Two, we want to ensure that there's going to be privacy. And three, that there's going to be transparency because we care about the child at the end of the day. We care about the image of this child and how this child will be able to progress as they are going to school. And we are also trying to ensure that this child is going to know their rightful parent and so that this wrongful burden is not put upon the wrong person, but the child in the end knows their parent. One thing which is important about our model is the child is going to have counseling. Proper counseling so that this child is going to understand the process that is going to take place. Then, if there are going to be any wars or deliberations between the parents, if the results are not going to be that favorable, the child has already been counseled and it will be a step by step and a guided process. So now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the one strong thing about our model. We are explaining it step by step, showing you a framework other than what they were doing. They're not explaining us at which period of enrolling. Is it when you're going to preschool or when you're going to primary? They're not necessarily explaining the steps of how this is going to take place and who exactly is going to take this child. Because one, they're failing to take account of this one thing. What if that parent is one? And what if the other parent is not even there? What is going to happen in such a case when you want to do this DNA test? They're not giving us a clear framework of how this is supposed to work. And which is why we are saying that our counter model, which they have failed to engage, they have not engaged in our counter model, is still the one which is more feasible and more comprehensive. 
So, honorable ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our next point in which we talked about complexity of the DNA testing and we talked about imagine the parents fighting in an environment which is like a school and three, we talked about the harms that the child is going to face if, especially if the parents are going to be rowdy when the results are not going to be favorable. Four, we talked about privacy in which privacy is very important. Yes, you're supposed to know your father, but it is not supposed to be something which is public to the whole masses. It's about you and your family and the people that are around you. And more so, they came here preaching and saying that the child needs to know their, their parent. But now, ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to have a modern which we are looking at a child, maybe it's just preschool, maybe it's primary. Most of the children at this time are mainly focusing on playing with toys. They are focusing on playing with toys. But as the child then grows up, that's when they have more of this focus on who really is my father, which is why we are saying that. Now, but ladies and gentlemen, a school setting, especially looking at the, the age of the child at this point, is not going to be really the feasible thing that we need in this section. Now, now but ladies and gentlemen, we want to move on to why we are trying to say that we are supposed to be winning this debate. Now, but ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the practicality aspect in which we've given you a comprehensive framework of why we deserve to be winning this debate. Two, we are looking at the utility and the necessity in which we are saying it is not necessary to do this in a school environment. It is necessary to do this in a private environment in which the child is going to be ensured that there is protection and they are nurtured so that they still get to know of their father but it's going to be done in the right framework. Now, we talked about our motto and its superiority and why we deserve to win because we've given you that one, there's going to be safety of the child, privacy and transparency and that the well-being of the child is going to be prioritized the child is going to be counseled to begin with so that they are going to understand this process which is going to ensure that they will know their parent at the end of the day but in the right framework. Now ladies and gentlemen we are trying to we, we are going to be weighing our side which has given you a full in-depth analysis of how we are moving versus their side in which they are not really explaining to us how they are going to be able to achieve their goals. Two, we had questions of obligation in which we have answered the question of efficiency in which we are proving to you how our motor is going to be more efficient because of the comprehensive, um, because of the comprehensive step that I have already outlined, we looked at the problem in which the child needs to know their parent that is already being addressed. Two, we looked at an institutional phrase in which we are saying that the child is supposed to know this. The, at an institution, the child is supposed to learn and is supposed to be brought up. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we looked at the trend and the tipping point, and we are saying that we want the child to know their parents, but we also need them to learn in an environment that is conducive. And for this, we are proud to oppose. Thank you. This marks the end of the first half of the debate. We are now proceeding to the next half. May I call the member of the government to the podium? Yeah, yeah. House Now, Pano, before I get into our station as the person that is, I want me to first sit in our opening for giving us their friends. When they told us the age, when they're giving us the way, the way, the way, and the way in the house, right? We also come to, I also come to give you my examples where I'm saying that the opening government comes to love because it comes to us about privacy over publicity, right? They are coming to tell us that the parents are going to be for publicity study. Well, the fact are for the fact that these schools are not television shows, panel. We are not saying that we are going to reveal, we are going to reveal the results to the parents in front of the whole world, in front of the whole school, on a camera, right? We are saying that we are going to send them these results. They are not going to be publicized and put on the viewers. No, they are going to be given to the parents, they are going to be given to the family, right? We also come to join, we also come to give you our decision. Where we are saying that there is a situation we want to know. Why are we even taking the stance of the DNA test in the first place? Why are we making it compulsory in the first place? Right? We come to tell you about equality panel. Where we are saying that every single child, we, there is no time that we can say that we are going to make one child get one child get a DNA test and the other not get in a school system, right? We are going to say that every single child is going to get and they can all feel fair. They will not know that even if that I want this I this DNA test, that someone else is going to get it still. Like we also they also came to tell us about the situation of being forced by them. If you do not want to go to this certain school, do not go, we are not forcing you to take the DNA test. We are talking about enrolling your child into a school. Denied. We're talking about enrolling your child into a school panel. But the moment that you say that we are being we are forcing you to we are forcing you to take this DNA test, right? which is not the case as our closing as, as what we are saying. Right? So we come to give you a word. Why are we making this compulsory in the first place? Right? We say that it's called profit of scholarships. Some schools provide scholarships, but for the moment that we say that in a, in a situation right, where we have a child who does not have a father, we have a child who's not, who does not have a father who's accountable for their situation of taking care of the child, right? we want schools to still, we want children to still have the right to education.
education, right? How are we going to do this? We're going to be providing school scholarships. What their schools will provide scholarships? Right? So the moment that you know the fact of the person and the man of the person, you know their say their financial state is system, right? You know how they are saying financially as their own household, right? We also tell you about the rate that is the moment that you taste the first child's generate, you now know that this child, this child is the father who has this type of disease, the father has diabetes, the father has BPD, the father has this and this and this and that. So now we can improve our whole systems at schools, right? Point. When I say yes, I think. Speaker, how do you guarantee the fact that you'll be able to get the historical details of that particular thing? DNA panel, we're going to tell you about DNA, DNA right? They don't have for the fact of how DNA happened in the first place, right? They just kept telling us about DNA, 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 this. Now I'm going to tell you that DNA, right? You take a skin DNA sample from the child, from the mother, and from any of them you can test, and you can test for different people, right? The accused father, the accused father, and the accused mother, right? You can now test for them. So the moment that you test, it, for example, their blood, right? You now know that this child is this child is this disease. Why because it came from the father? This child is this disease. Why because it came from the mother, right? So the moment that you know that, right? We can now improve our schools. We can now improve our health systems at schools. Because you see, remember, our, our parents, right? We, not everyone can help afford those clothes. So the moment that we send your child to school, we also want to take care of this child because we are in local parents at school days. We have the ones who are taking care of the child, for example, for their parents. We have brothers who leave the schools. They need to be taken care of. When they get sick, there is no one that will call the parents and say, parents, come get your child. It's not, a, it's not really a consistent situation. Right? So we are saying that we want this child to be able to be taken care of when they are in school. So the moment that you take a child right, and you know their disease, right, you know how to take care of them and you know what makes sense to be happy at school, right? You know how to account for your children at school, right? We also come to tell you about where we say that, about where we say that it also provides employment. And the end, for example, government schools, panel. We know that our, our situation, the government is not paying more, right? Pictures are not being cured, well, this is not being cured, well, right? So how are we for that? And schools we also want to give employment for each other. We're taking a socialist approach, panel, where we're saying that we want a generic fairness, right? We also want to take, we also want to, we also want to improve, right? Our We want to know what the real father is, that we get the real disease and the real probability. Right? So you want to reduce the amount of people lying and changing themselves. That's why I don't do it at these schools, not in a public sense, but no. Because we know that they are left. They are going to be using the left at these schools. Right? That way, don't show everyone that this person is going to get this, that this child is being taken. Ma'am, you do understand that most of the schools are already incapacitated. Some don't have textbooks. So how can they do this? when they already don't have essential resources that you already Okay, so I know this address that is a goal from the We are going to seek assistance from NGOs, from the Ministry of Health, okay? We also want to seek assistance from the National Government. Why? Because it's experience. So when you get to the
tasty. Come with the chocolate, check out and see. Come get some more to the cushion and beat. Close your TNA and all the best. We are all over Zimbabwe. Konda Pes today.
the debate are here. With the assistance of our honorable guest, Sinashem Kafe, there was a deliberation of the debate, and these are the results. At four, we have closing opposition benefit. Go 
Let us close in what? It's closing what? With the bait? Tim, that was sitting here with the person with the check jacket. Which team was this? Both of you, can you come here? It's both. Both of you can come here, yes? Yes. Applause? Thank you. 